Hello children, welcome to this week's Sunday Club. We'll be looking at Abraham. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, nod your head, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Nod your head, turn around, say Amen. Clap your hands now. Sit down, 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 and up. Praise the Lord. Hello children, today we're going to talk about Abraham and God's promise to Abraham. Once there was a man named Abraham, he had a wife Sarah. They didn't think they could have any children, which was a disappointment to them because they really wanted a family. But little did Abraham know, God had a plan for him. When Abraham was about 75 years old, God told him he was going to have a child. It was God's promise to Abraham. One day God would send a rescuer through his family. All God wanted was that Abraham and Sarah leave their home first and follow him. This was a difficult decision, a tough choice to make. Leave all their friends and trust God or stay where they had all their friends. See Abraham really wanted children he was very old and Sarah had not been able to have children. So Abraham and Sarah, if they were going to leave their home, they had to trust God's promise and believe that it was going to happen, that God could do something impossible. So Sarah and Abraham left. They moved to a homeland called Canaan because they knew that God would keep his promise and they trusted him. Right away when they arrived, God reminded Abraham of his promise. So God took Abraham outside and showed him the stars in the sky and told him that he would have more descendants than there were stars. And Abraham trusted God. As time went by, Abraham and Sarai still had no children. So they thought they would give God a hand. Always a bad move. God has his own plans and his own timing which is better than ours. Sarah blamed God for not, her not having children. So she told Abraham to take her slave, Hagar, as his second wife and try and have a child with her. So this is what Abraham did and Hagar became pregnant. This made Sarah very jealous and she treated Hagar so badly that Hagar ran away. While she was running away, an angel came to her and told her that God had not forgotten her. The angel told Hagar, that she would have a child and she would call him Ishmael and he would not have an easy life. He was told Hagar to go back to Abram and be with them again. And so she returned and Ishmael was born. Abram was 86 years old. When Abram was 99 years old, God made a covenant, a special promise to him. God told him that he was to be the father of many nations and it was no longer to be called Abram, but was to be called Abraham which is how we know. He also said that Sarai 
would be called Sarah and would become the mother of nation. Secretly, Abraham thought, how can that be? Can Sarah really become a mother? After all, she's 90 years old. Can't Ishmael be my heir? He asked, and God said, no, Sarah will have a son and you will call him Isaac. Then God left Abraham. Sometime later, as he was sitting outside his tent, he saw three men approaching his camp. And as was the custom, he asked them to stop and have a meal with him. And they said yes. While they were eating, the man asked, Where's Sarah? And Abraham said, She's inside the tent. She's probably slaving away doing the cooking. One of the men, who were really angels, but Abraham didn't know that, told Abraham that in nine months' time, he would come back and Sarah would have a child. Now Sarah was secretly listening to all this and she laughed to herself thinking, I'm too old to have a baby. And so is Abraham. It was the sort of laugh that said, yeah, yeah, so that's gonna happen, isn't it? The man asked why Sarah laughed and didn't believe him. Now Sarah was afraid. How did these men know so much? And she didn't, she said, I didn't laugh. But the man said, yes, you did but nothing is too hard for God. In due course, as the man had said, Sarah gave birth to a baby boy and called him Isaac. Sarah said, God has brought us joy and laughter and everyone who hears about this will laugh with us, conveniently forgetting that she once laughed at God and didn't quite believe what God had said. So God fulfilled his promise to Abraham and although in trying to help God by having Ishmael, he did cause a lot of problems. So much so that Sarah sent Ishmael and Hagar away again. But still God looked after them. The Abraham questioned what God had said. God was always true and faithful to his promise. God may not do what we want. He may not do things the way we want him to do them. But his plans are always better than ours. He's always faithful and wants the best for us. So just remember that. Hello. Today we thought we'd have a little bit of fun and I'll show you how to make a balloon sing. Now, you've probably heard balloons make strange sounds like this. But now I'm going to show you how to make it sing using the balloon and a hexagonal nut. Now, the first thing you have to do is blow up the balloon a little bit just to make it a bit loose. So. open up a bit. Next thing we have to do is to put the hexagonal nut inside the balloon very carefully. You have to feed it through you can see it there in the neck there it is inside the uh, balloon so now we blow it up. Not too big else the hexagonal might break the balloon. So we tie it off. Always the difficult bit this one. And once you've got it tied off, you take it by the top and you swirl it. And that's how you make a balloon sing. Now, if you change the size of the nut, you change the note of the balloon. So here's one with a very big hexagonal knot in. Are we ready? Here's one 
but a very tiny nut. Now there is a health and safety warning with this in the fact that this sound can drive adults mad. So don't do it too often and when people say stop please do otherwise I'll get into awful trouble. Bye. Abraham's story speaks of adventure, faith and obedience as well as trust. God sent Abraham out into the unknown to start a new life. Something some of us, and maybe even some of your parents, have done. As he was with Abraham, so he is with us. Adventures, adventures, adventures. Ah, wow, those can be fun and a bit scary at the same time. Mm. So... Trusting in God is very important. Like Jonah, for instance, we looked at previously. The journey isn't always going to be easy. And so we need to learn to lean on God in everything and for everything, knowing He will always look after us. Now, with those in mind, let us pray. Father, thank you for the example of Abraham, whose life has shown us what it means to have faith, to be obedient, and to trust that you will always, always look after us. Amen. Amen. See you next week.